Welcome to a brand new episode of the Cooligans. It's the Cooligans, buddy. As always, uh, I am. I'm excited to be here. Hello, my name is Christian Polanco, and I'm here with uh, my my guest, my guest co-host, just sharing sharing the stage today with someone uh, who is. Uh, it's been long overdue that that we you know to to have her on the show. Uh, one of uh, you know one of the best Twitter follows in. Women's soccer, without a doubt. There's, you know, as a comedian, I appreciate the humor and levity that you bring to the game. Uh, you know, the coolest 23 year old I know. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> just <laughs> you're watch, you gotta watch the 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 super young uh, right. the vibes and hand sig hand gestures uh, that she is bringing. Uh, but I'm joined. Uh, by none other of Equalizer uh, Soccer, a great publication for women's soccer. Please give it up for Jenna Tonelli, everybody. Jenna, what's up? Thank you so much for having me. What an introduction. And that was permanently on the record. 23. Exactly. No <laughs> doubts about it. If any, people, Don't ask to see my long form birth certificate. <laughs> the, the haters who question your age are really just, these are just trolls. Yeah, okay. I know. These are not. Uh, I don't have time for it. <laughs> okay. If you, got, if you don't got haters, you ain't popping. <laughs> 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 so, uh, Jenna, thank you so much for joining me. This is, uh, yes, uh, uh, Alexis couldn't be here today, so apologies on his behalf because uh, CBS decided to send him uh, to London and to Dortmund for UEFA Champions League. Uh, I mean, not even that even it, it, that interesting of a tournament. I don't know why <laughs> they're doing uh, all this stuff. But, yes, uh, if, if people uh, saw the, uh, the, the Champions League coverage on Paramount Plus and CBS, you saw Alexis uh, at the Emirates. You saw him chopping it up with Thierry Henry, almost getting, I don't know if it's a, into a fight. Uh, or yeah, I wouldn't call it a fight. A uh, fight is a little go, Somebody said, somebody on Twitter said um, that they were going blow for blow. Oh. Like just a, like a little, little sparring match. Go roasting each other. You know, I have to say, I didn't really pay that much attention to what they were saying because when I saw him and I knew I was coming on, I was like, "What? Yeah, what? Well, you, you're not supposed to be there." I'm like, "Get back on that plane. We have work to do." Yeah. Okay, you should be there while I am present. Uh, but no, so, so that was a dope uh, thing to see, and and then uh, Alexis went to Dortmund for the, the Dortmund PSV match. Uh, just a, a, a wild, uh, you know. Story the, in the in the Cooligans universe, mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy it that, all, yeah. that that, that yeah. this stuff is happening. And look, just like uh, you know, you have people doubting that you're 23 years old. <laughs> We have people that doubt the fact that our the legitimacy of us even being in in these uh, in front of the camera next to Thierry on yeah, and now so, they have even more reasons. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> bro. That's it, dog. We're all twenty three right. and thriving. I'm Thirty, flirty, and thriving, but twenty three. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So uh, we're here today to talk uh, about uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know NWSL. The NWSL season is starting this weekend. Yeah, the challenge. It is. Up. It's happening tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Gotham against uh, San Diego uh, Wave. Uh, the the new look Gotham. Uh, right. So th there's a lot to uh, kind of be excited. This season, um, you know, you are the the beat reporter mm -hmm. for Gotham FC. So um, we're uh, so I want to get into um, those those specifics and details. We're going to talk a lot of uh, well so today. Uh, but I want to get let people know Jenna Tonelli and and how you got into this. A business, how you got into the game, uh, because we've met a couple times yes. in passing. Um, usually, at, uh, I think we, I think the first time we met was at the NWSL final, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, I could be wrong. I mean, at least the first time I met you. I don't know if you met Alexis somewhere else, but I remember mm -hmm. in at Audi Field. Um, oh yes, 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 that's right. Against, I remember. Um, yeah. uh, Th Thorns against uh, Kansas Thorns City. Kansas City, yes. Uh, and but was, I was spying on you when you would come to Red Bull. I was like. Okay. Like, <laughs> All right, we got we got stalkers. Like, there they are. Yeah, Jenna was she, Jenna had binoculars and she was twelve feet away from us. I know. <laughs> I'm in the press box, like, <laughs> like just checking. Uh, well, dope. No, so I'm I'm glad you're you're here. But uh, as far as um uh, you know, starting to cover the, this team, cover NWSL. I mean, wh what's the journey been like? Uh, you know, before you got to this moment now. Yeah. So it was it was just so weird. I mean, so I. Was on Twitter one day, just tweeting, making some jokes, mm -hmm. you know, no, no, 
nobody's paying attention to me, I so or so I believe. Right, right. And I get a DM from um, this guy, Greg. He runs a site called Jersey Sporting News, and they cover um, all sports in New Jersey, a local site. They cover, like, high school, college, like, a very cool website. And he messaged me and said, um, you know, you seem to know a lot about the team. We're looking to have some coverage of Gotham. Um, you- was it, Were they Sky Blue at the time? Or um, it was 2020, so I think they had just they, they rebranded. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so they just rebranded, and so he's like, "We're looking to cover them. Um, do you uh, you seem to know a lot about the team? Do you have any writing experience?" And I do have some writing experience in my past, and I said, "All right, like, yeah, yeah. Why not? I'm I'm watching these games. I'm thinking about these games anyway. I love women's soccer. I've been a, you know, I played a little bit as a kid. I've been a huge fan of the national team." Um, know got into the league after like the 2015 world cup win so i said you know what why not okay and then it just yeah snowballed i think gotham at the time you know especially like 2021 um after the the covid era was a whole separate beast but um they were really lacking some consistent coverage at that time so i think it was i feel very fortunate that i was able to kind of come in at a time where this team was changing and rebranding and moving to Red Bull Arena, and I was able to just like be there every week and talk to the players and yeah. watch the games. And um, yeah, I just feel really fortunate that I was able to do this and am now sitting here with yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. Uh, I mean, I think it, it, it highlights the, um, I think a lot of times people, I'm sure people reach out to you and ask you questions like, how do I get into this business? Mm-hmm. How do I get into this industry? And there's a little bit of like the barrier of entry is not that incredibly high. I mean, there, there no. are gatekeepers here and there, mm-hmm. but for the most part, it's like if you really uh, just start doing the work, yes, something could happen. Absolutely, I, I say yeah. this all the time. Uh, um, you know, the a lot of times people ask like, oh, how how do I get started? I don't have a lot of followers and blah blah blah. But it's like if you just consistently yeah. uh, uh, participate in it for like I don't know, maybe like six months. You will just, you may not have a ton of followers, but Mm -hmm. maybe the followers that you do have are people that work in soccer already and appreciate your work and might give you an opportunity. And that's what happened to me. And it was actually so funny because so my wife, Adriana, who works in also in CBS, she had no idea I even had this Twitter account. She had no no (laughs) clue at all. You had a secret account. I know. The burner. burner (laughs) She has Twitter and like I had Twitter, but it just was like my first name and I was just like saying silly stuff and. Um, so I like finally told her about it. She was like, oh, <laughs> why did she tell you this? I was like, I don't know. It was like my own little like pet project yeah. or something. I don't know. But um, she's obviously been incredibly supportive of, of me. But no, it's true. I started that account. I have like, what, like 50, 60 followers, just yeah, other yeah. fans of the game. And um, it was just, yeah, it, 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 I, I totally agree. I mean, if you're willing to put in the work and, you know, I won't lie, it's really tough. Um, I was paid zero dollars. I lost yeah. money because I had to pay to get to the game, park at the game, you know, all that kind totally. of stuff. Um, but if you're, you know, if you are interested in doing it and and, and have the privilege of being able to put in, in the work, it's very possible. Um, and it's really rewarding and it's really fun. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is a uh, so let's uh, let's get into this uh, upcoming season. Right. Obviously, uh, the Challenge Cup yes. is uh, is happening uh, tomorrow. I think it is it 8 p.m. start or something 8 like that. kickoff. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, it's gonna be like eight oh seven kickoff. You know how they do. They always they like trick kickoff. us to to watch seven minutes of pregame. <laughs> well, I'll be at the game, so I'll be like yeah, yeah. watching seven minutes of my binoculars. Uh, yeah, I'm, like stalking who's there. Yeah. No, it, it's it's an interesting year. Um, in you know, not just you know, th- this is the first iteration of this Challenge Cup, which is yes. is is similar to uh, the Community Shield yes. that we, so like uh, if you know, in England. Copa yeah, yeah. Okay. So the you know the the champion plays the Supporter Shield uh, champion. Right. And um, so, so it, it should lead to an interesting game. Yeah. Um, the but and th- but this year in NWSL feels a little bit um, like we're on the precipice of something yes. bigger. Yes. Given that, like you know, the Men's World Cup is happening in 2026, so obviously a lot of attention is going to be paid to Can't soccer. Wait for those Europeans to come to MetLife, <laughs> uh. <laughs> bro. Okay, you're gonna learn what New Jersey transit is like. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. New Jersey Turnpike. Oh, um, uh, gonna be great. 
You know what? I, I'm sure there's going to be a video of somebody recreating the Sopranos intro <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from, like, Belgium. You know what I mean? Like, somebody's oh going to do gosh. it. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's gonna They're be... going to do the Sex in the City tour. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, this yeah, is, yeah, you know, yeah. everybody goes consume uh, New York culture. Yeah. Um, Friends. Friends. That, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, go Central Park. Spoiler friend, alert. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 and they're going to be like, wow, there's way more uh, black people here than there were on Friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is very different. Yeah. Than, <laughs> this is not the New York I, I see on Netflix <laughs> reruns of Friends. Um, but the but, but not only that, but the, the TV deals, yes. uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, for that, that split Amazon, Ion, which I'm like, I got to learn what that is. I know. They were like, scripts. I was like, <laughs> the scripts. So, oh, <laughs> so there's gonna be a lot of places to watch uh, NW. Yeah. So, so this year feels a little bit uh, different. And then I even possibly uh, the, the, the 2027 Women's World Cup could mm-hmm. be uh, here as well. We don't know uh, where that. It's a shame that we don't know where it is yet. Yes. But <laughs> the uh, you know uh, Infantino and his suit hoodie will figure it all out. Uh, <laughs> so we're yeah. all good there. Um, but so th- there's a, a lot to look uh, forward to um, when it comes to. Uh, we'll start with the Challenge Cup. Um, and I, obviously, you are the Gotham FC expert. This year, uh, f- it, it definitely this is a this is a Miami Heat. You know when LeBron went mm-hmm. to the Heat, when <laughs> oh, when the Celtics, you know, just like that. <laughs> the big three. You know what I mean? But this is like yeah, oh, yeah, in yeah. women's soccer. This is like oh, we built a super team, right? Oh yeah. So obviously the additions of Tina Davidson, Crystal Dunn, Rose Lavelle, uh, uh, so many other players yeah. uh, uh, already on a stacked team. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What is the the you know the I, I think I'm easily favoring Gotham in this one mainly because. Of the U.S. Women's National uh, Emily Sana as well. I can't remember her name. Um, but the, the, the they just played in the Gold Cup, so they just have they just have minutes, and they, and they yes. I think they're in probably will be in better form. Yeah. Um, o- over San Diego, even though obviously San Diego has a couple of U.S. Women's National Team players as well. Um, but the, the but looking forward to this Challenge Cup. What do you sort of expect from it, and not only just the, in, in the actual game, but just what it means to the future of the league? Absolutely, and it's so funny. So I was a little late because I was on the press conference. And I totally miscal. I work from home, so I like miscalculated yeah, the yeah, amount. Yeah. I was like, I could absolutely be on this press conference and then like get in, <laughs> and there will be zero subway delays, <laughs> and everything will be hunky dory. Um, but it's so funny. Somebody asked um, Casey Stoney, the coach of San Diego Wave, kind of like a similar question about like the Challenge Cup, and it's like, oh, you're playing the the championship team, and you're the Shield winner. Like, um, is this like the battle for who's truly the best in the league? And she just goes. We're the best in the league. There we go. <laughs> I was like, all right. I mean, they're a great team. I mean, they have Jaden Shaw, who just like killed it in yeah, Golden yeah. Cup. Um, I think she won like MVP of the tournament. Yeah, yeah, she had like a Golden and, Ball. Yep, that's right. Al- Alex Morgan, um, who had a great showing in the Gold Cup as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Gotham, it's crazy. They have all the four you just mentioned. Plus Midge Purse, plus yeah. Lynn Williams, plus Jenna Nysonger, plus Esther Gonzalez, who just won the World Cup with Spain, plus you know players that are just like NWSL league players who you know aren't in the on the national stage, but are like killing it in the league. So um, I, I think it's it's so interesting now to see this like new iteration of the Challenge Cup. It was like first it was the bubble, then it was this like fifty million game tournament <laughs> spread out across the, right. the league uh, season, and now it's this like one game, which I actually think is really cool. Um, I think it's a great way to kick off the season. It's going to be on like one Amazon, which is like their new one of their new mm-hmm. partners. Um, so I think this is just like another indication of the growth of the league. And I'm really excited to see these two teams in particular go head to head, because I do think right now without seeing like what all the other teams are, are doing, you know, with the upcoming season, like these are probably the two best teams in the league right now. Yeah. And seeing them go head to head is going to be really exciting. Um, I'm, I'm, I was like, ooh, should I make like a prediction? Oh yeah, well, please. Okay. We need I'm going to say, <laughs> no, I like, never do this, but I'm like feeling like frisky <laughs> today. Um, I'm going to say it's going to be 4-3 Gotham win. It's wow. Gonna, uh, yeah. I think it's going to be a goal fest. Interesting. Yeah. I think, you know, uh, we're look, uh, we're, we have your uh, your Twitter uh, uh, bio up, uh, your Twitter up, yes. and then we have, obviously you have uh, the, Neely. Uh, Neely Martin as the goalkeeper so <laughs> when when Mandy Hawk got the red yes. card. I was at I was in San Diego for oh. the final and Mandy Hawk got the red card. Neely Martin, this is was this her second time in goal? It, what, for Gotham. For Gotham, yeah. Yes. And she had done this in college a couple times. Right, right, yeah, right. So that's why they kept putting her in. <laughs> so, and she's so funny. She was just like, yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> so, so there's a um, – so th- th- that's kind of one of my thoughts when it comes to uh, go- goalkeeping. Mm-hmm. Go- I mean, Kaylin Sheridan would have to be favored as the better goalkeeper for San Diego mm-hmm. right now. I mean, given 
obviously just playing in the Gold Cup. That's and right. And then we don't. So who we don't know who is gonna start. Is um, it gonna? Because Abby Smith, I believe, is. Injured. She's injured right now. They had her listen to season ending indus- so, industry injury yeah, yeah. on the list they just put out. So we have Cassie Miller and uh, Michelle Betos. Yeah. And I can see either one of them starting. I mm-hmm. mean, Cassie Miller is fantastic as well. Michelle Betos is, is, is a veteran in yeah. this league. Like, you know what you're getting with her. Um, so I actually don't know. Um, it really could be either. It, could be, <laughs> it really so, could be either. So because of the uncertainty, that's where I you would uh, sort yeah. of favor. Um, uh, at least I would. I would probably favor as like who would. So I don't. Yeah. I don't expect that many goals. But if we, I guess it's possible, it's possible. right? Be, uh, given uh, you know sort of the uh, look. Uh, main thing is I. I'm hoping Gotham doesn't give up three. That's really <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. I, mean, I know they can score four. I don't want them to give up three either. That's not like I, I think. I just think it's going to be like. The battle of the forwards here. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you have Alex Morgan and Jaden Shaw, both of whom are competing for uh, an Olympic spot. Yeah. Um, same thing at Gotham. I mean, you have Lynn, you have Midge, you have, um, you know, even even Rose and, and Emily. It's going to be yeah. a very, I mean, we'll get to more U.S. Women's National Team stuff because the Olympics are going to be a very difficult roster yes. to select because there's going to be some very disappointed and I'm, I would even say angry players that uh, that that may be left off. Um, but the what I, what I love about the Challenge Cup is that we get another opportunity to see a, a just a, a, a Wilson Trophy celebration yes. because these are becoming some of my favorite moments yes. in in sports yes, because yes. they're different than men's sports trophy celebrations. There are <laughs> they they. Are more entertaining. Oh my gosh! They, the locker rooms. <laughs> the locker rooms. Oh man, it's like I don't want to be in the locker room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was like, I just want to be as far away from there as the, possible. Because the the original, the initial, the inaugural Challenge Cup, we got the uh, uh, Christy the Mewis, Christy Mewis holding iconic. holding the Bud Lights, uh, it, right? I don't know why they don't just use that in all, every single one of their marketing <laughs> materials. Like it's literally so it's just. Like, yeah, Ooh. it's a it's a great when uh, when the dash uh, won and I, did she recreate it when uh, when Gotham won? I, I, I feel like she, she may have. I don't remember. I think I've right now. I'm just thinking of Alex Morgan who had like 17 Michelob Ultras in the cup. <laughs> and she was just on, and they're like, "How many was in there?" And she's like, 17. <laughs> so uh, so we get to uh, uh, you have one of those celebrations on tomorrow, right? Tomorrow. So we get to we get to experience that. So yes. that's it. Will you be there? I I'm like so my my wife is away uh, for the fr- I just had a, so a baby. You must play. Well, <laughs> I had a baby. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so um, this will be the first weekend that she is away, and um, yeah. so basically it would be I have to put my son to bed, yes. and then my mom will stay with the okay. baby, and then I'll go to the game. So I'm like ninety percent okay. sure. I'm, you know, this is the, the, the bring first, Mateo to the game. Bring, what do you just, mean? As he's asleep. Uh, yeah, right? I know. Did put him just, in the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Can Simba him be the part of the celebrations? I'm sure they'll 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 throw him across the beer soaked floor <laughs> as like that'd be that'd be a dope ass celebration. Oh, or the apple cider uh, Corbin Albert drinking the sparkling cider. Did oh yeah, that, that was a good one. <laughs> um, the uh, what, what we also had the uh, the the baby sipping the truly in the yes, stands. That oh, the was truly amazing. Baby. <laughs> the truly oh, baby. That was so. People were like very mad about that. Yeah, I could, I, I could see. You know what? I could see why people would yeah. find it hilarious, and then like I can also see yeah, why yeah. people <laughs> would be upset. I'm like, it. but clearly this is a dad who's just like just hold this. Like, just, just hold this. It was a, clearly an empty I bottle, mean, yeah. but the, it's the optics yeah. of a baby holding, uh, you know, an alcohol, <laughs> an alcoholic we're, beverage. We're gonna need the like, oh, where are they now? In, like 10, 15 years of truly, you know, because they all, you know, they're conservative folks out there that if, if they hear rap music somewhere, they're like, this neighborhood is going to shit or whatever. There's too many babies with truly. <laughs> they see that and they're like, we can't have these babies with empty truly cans. Um, they might, they might inhale some alcohol from, from the empty can. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I'm excited about that. So yeah, Gotham uh, and, and San Diego are uh, playing in in the Challenge Cup. It should be very entertaining. I will uh, do my best to be. I'm pretty sure I will be there. But uh, so hopefully, if you see me, say hello uh, with your binoculars. Oh, that's right. right. I will. <laughs> Flare guns. So we just talked about the Challenge Cup that's happening on Friday. But let's do a little bit more general NWSL preview. General, what do you think are going to be some like the big storylines for the league this season? Who do you think are some other, you know, maybe some sleeper teams that could compete for the title? What are you thinking about uh, the season so far? Yeah, I mean, an- another season with, um, ooh. Hello. Oh, uh, another <laughs> season with two expansion teams. So I think that's going to be really interesting. Um, 
Bay FC and the Utah Royals. Um, it's I think Bay FC has put together a really strong roster, mm-hmm. and I'm really really excited to see what they look like coming out. Um, Utah, I'm also you know really interested in seeing they have former player from uh, Gotham, yeah, and NWSL icon Amy Rodriguez. Oh, that's right, yeah, well, as a, a coach. Uh, Amy has yes. done our show before. Uh, one of uh, you know I definitely. Especially the you know the team from 2015 that yes. won the World Cup and and just a revered just special uh, a player I'm a huge fan of her yeah uh, uh, so when we got to uh, uh, talk to her that was like super super cool and uh, so exciting to see yes. and and, uh, and a person that is like. Yeah, you should be a coach. Oh, oh, for sure, 100%. for sure, and it's really cool that we're seeing like more of that. Like Bevianes, yeah. former player coaching Louisville. Um, I think it's just so amazing that like to see that because I think Louisville also is going to be like a completely different team now. You know, they had a lot of movement this off season, especially with the expansion draft. They lost. Paige Monahan, who is now the captain of the Utah Royals, was just named today. Yeah, yeah, which is really cool. Congrats to her. Congrats to her. Um, and but so I think Louisville is going to look totally different than what we've seen them come out sure. to be in the past. I think they could actually really be a sleeper team as well. Um, you know, obviously we've got uh, Kansas City. I think that they, you know, they are now opening the first ever women's specific soccer stadium yep. in the world, and I think there's going to just be a lot of like drive and motivation on that team to like really show out because that's going to be showcase. I mean, that's like the opening game of the, of the season. So yeah. I think that of uh, technically challenge cup is like not the season. Um, so I think they could be uh, one to watch as well. There, there was a, um, I don't know if you saw this tweet and apologies because I can't remember who it was, but somebody tweeted uh, like some interaction that they had online because they were talking about the Kansas City Current Stadium, yeah. and then somebody uh, somebody responded like, um, "Wow, they, they did they do this for a, a women's team? Uh, I can't wait till Kansas City gets a, a men's team." <laughs> and it was just, just such a like, you don't even care, you don't care at all. You just want to like shit on women. Like that's mm-hmm. a, <laughs> it's such a ridiculous thing. I know, I know. It's so funny because it's like, so I have like very um, specific, like, words muted on Twitter. Okay, okay. Um, one of them is Dallas U15. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is good. The other this one is good because you, yeah. you have to cleanse oh my gosh. this from, from cleanse. your life because you've heard it enough. It, it, yep. The other one is Dalai Lama, if you remember Which? the whole thing that he, like, did. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. I yes. couldn't see it. Yeah, I yeah, had yeah. to mute it. <laughs> Yes. Okay. That's other, a, that was a that's a gross one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. God, I had to mute that. And now the one I just added is in bio. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Just oh, I know totally what. You, muted with the spacing. I know what you mean. Just, Twitter has yeah. become a very strange. <laughs> the comment section of every Twitter post has become a nightmare. nightmare. Uh, I, I don't know why Elon thinks he's doing anything oh. positive for this platform. Uh, but yes, yeah, that's, <laughs> that is hilarious. Shout uh, out to the porn bio, bots. I don't want to see it. <laughs> totally <laughs> muted. Shout out to the porn bots for all of our... Uh, <laughs> we, what's it called? All of our engagement. Hey, yo, we love Twitter. engagement, bro. <laughs> we'll take it from anyone. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. We tell all the advertisers, everybody's really you know engaging with our content. Uh, okay. Um, Regardless of how, <laughs> even though the even though the you know the the post is a blurry image that has to be <laughs> that has to be unblurry to see yeah. it. Anyway, uh, we're all going through it. It's a nightmare. Please fix it. Um, yes, the it, it, it's a, it's an interesting space. I mean, I want to talk yeah. to to you about. I mean, obviously, one of the owners of, of Gotham FC. Obviously, Carly Lloyd is a is a divisive figure in in and but and not in like a and it's such a strange thing because yeah. it's not like. I'm not it's not like upsetting in a in like in a deeply political or like sort of yeah, sense where you're like, like a hating FedEx delivery driver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like kind of like I don't know why I'm I'm annoyed yeah. but I'm like kind of annoyed. and it, it's so it's a it's a fascinating thing to to have a uh obviously a former player a legendary player mm, yeah. be be a little bit like it, it's it's almost like I I think that her mentality and perspective is like I'm going to show a little bit of tough love to yes. everybody coming after me because that's sort of what I yeah. maybe I dealt with and and maybe and that's what made me as an individual a better player and yeah. I want the players to be good so I'm not just going to be I'm not going to coddle them. Right. Um and and I think for for the state of of women's soccer and just soccer in general there's a little bit of a we're in a generation that's a, probably a little bit more sensitive and I think for and that sensitive and like we care about their feelings a little right, bit right, more right. <laughs> not like sensitive like woke like, or whatever <laughs> no, <please. laughs> the, sensitive like 
morally, we're like, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to just bash players. Right, of course, of course. Yeah, so, yeah. so I think we're in this transition of like, how do we g- get that dog in mm. them the way Carly <laughs> has? And then also care about not just, you know, putting sort of players down or being unreasonably Harsh, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. And every time she says something, like I always have to remind myself, like that's like directly coming from her experience. Yeah. And I might not agree. Um, some of her former teammates might not agree. Sure. But um, I, I do think you know, there's no question that she is a legendary player who had tremendous success. And I saw a tweet years ago that was just like, one day Carly Lloyd's gonna have a rest stop on the Jersey Turnpike named after her. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Like, yeah. <laughs> Like she, yeah, she is a yeah, Jersey dude. legend, and that's what Jersey <laughs> legends get. Um, wow! But, exit, all exit seventeen. We love Carly Lloyd. Exit. Carly Lloyd, rest stop. Like Chick-fil-A. there's a sick subway, a sick subway. <laughs> you know what? And there's no bathrooms at this rest stop. Okay, you will not you get. Gotta hold it in, <laughs> tough it out. Tough it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. we're making tough drivers in New Jersey. Yeah, that's right, that's right. That's because you got to learn how to make those left turns. So, um, no, but it is really interesting. And I think um, she, you know, I, I've heard very positive things about her from former coaches, former teammates, former yeah. players. I mean, she's a competitor. Yeah. Um, but I do think, like, it's okay that at, that we can, like, grow and evolve. And, like, I you agree. can have that dog in you. In like a different way. I'm um, just a smaller dog. Yeah. You know, a much yeah. more. Okay, small dogs are like small. legit though. <laughs> you mad. know, like they're, they're crazy. They're super cute. Then they have some bark in I'm them. I'm more scared of small dogs than I am of big dogs. Right, 100%. right, right. <laughs> so. Okay, like I have a golden doodle. You know, anybody tries to enter my home, my dog will immediately rush them uh, and lick them in their face and, right. and kill them with kindness. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's the kind of dogs we need. I mean, I'm a cat person, mm-hmm. but like. <laughs> my cats come home and they're like, "Uh, oh, you're back." <laughs> okay, I thought I had to place it myself for a little well, longer. Adriana comes home and they're like, "Oh, you're back." <laughs> I'm, like, okay, I'm spare. Okay, they've chosen sides. Yeah, um, for sure. For so sure. Uh, let's talk. Uh, uh, so you also missed uh, uh, NWSL. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, the obviously you you mentioned the two expansion teams. Um, the uh, we had a question from one uh, from uh, a Gully Squad, which is our Patreon. And um, uh, Ian, who is uh, from Utah, and okay. he, uh, asks uh, 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 questions about about Utah Rose. He has a couple of them. He says, "How much trouble are the Royals in this season?" So he's a little bit more pessimistic mm. than than you might be. Um, uh, he mentions the uh, an inexperienced coaching staff, a lot of inexperienced players. Can they hang with the ho- Gotham's and San Diego's of the league? It's a great question. It's one I've really been wondering myself. And you know, they do have some experienced players on there. Um, Amani Dorsey, Ifian Amanu came from Gotham. Yeah. Um, Allie Long is randomly like a trialist He's, over I there. That, I'm yeah. like, sign her. <laughs> um, because actually I think she would be a great addition. Without a a veteran presence, a World Cup winner, um, a, like a passing queen, a set piece. I mean, like as, far, as like, far as a, when you want possession yes. of a ball, that's you the girl. you reach out to Ali oh, Long yep. because she will never <laughs> never l- lose the ball. She will always maintain possession. I love her stories about like playing futsal. That's and right. All that like she you can see it when she plays. It's actually like really fun to watch. Yes. And also like just unrelated, but her story about like coming back after having twins like mm-hmm. crazy. Like she's just like a beast. Yeah. She um, she was saying uh, she did our show a couple years ago and she mentioned that when she plays futsal, the she would play with like uh, just uh, like uh, like Hispanic community yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they would call it like la. la Rubia, yeah. which is like the blonde, yeah, yeah, like whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so she's playing with men, right? but yeah. that's, that's how you get a nick. When you get a nickname, you're you, you're, you made it. Yeah. Okay, that, that means they respect your Absolutely. game. Absolutely. You know, when I'm playing, they call me by my full name. All right, yeah, full government, name. full government name. <laughs> they do not respect my ability on the pitch. <laughs> I'm like, damn, bro, are you looking at my ID? Uh, how'd you get my confirmation name? You really know me too well. Uh, so yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I, I I think um, Utah. I mean, with most expansion teams, you usually there's there's like an instinctive worry of like they don't know the league, they yes. don't know they don't know each other. Yeah, for sure. And I think um, just being an expansion team is really really hard. I mean, Orlando, Louisville, those teams like really struggled. Yeah. Angel City has had some mixed results. I mean, I think they did a, last year was like crazy turnaround to even get into the playoffs with Becky Tweed um, as now now their full head coach, who also used to be Gotham uh, in, uh, assistant coach. Mm-hmm. All, all comes back to Gotham. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, San Diego is an example of a team that I think is like an outlier. But they, 
you know, they had so much experienced talent. Casey Stoney is your coach and all sure. that. And yeah, I mean, I think Utah is going to be really tough. Um, you know, Amy's amazing. She's an amazing player, and I think she has what it takes, but it's going to be tough. Um, you have a young team, young coaching staff. Um, it, it could be a very uh, transitional year for, for, for them. Sure, I, and Utah has an interesting uh, storyline because they, they they were there they for were a long there, time and, they and then they they moved to Kansas City and Kansas City got a team back right and now they brought back Utah yes. in in the different form so when it comes to like the fan support that will already be there yes. it's almost like everything else that has to yes. kind of start from the What's ground on up the field is going to be tough um, but. Uh, this league is so crazy and so competitive. Like any team on any day could be any team. Yeah, like, which is where we saw the the comments from like uh, from Esther when mm-hmm. she was saying like uh, playing in NWC is like playing Champions League uh, every week. Yeah. People people have different different opinions <laughs> on that comment. <laughs> I don't know if you get into that. I mean, it, it's I mean I don't know how but much. But it is highly competitive. Like, I agree. I think that was her point. Like it's just highly competitive. I do also yeah. think like watching you know uh, thanks to like CBS and Paramount mm-hmm. Plus. I you know you you I get to watch some of the other women's leagues. Yes. And 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 the zone and, yes. and, and and so that's been awesome. And you can watch on YouTube uh, yes. the the women's champions league and stuff like that. But then I, week to week, th- there's almost like a, a weird bias I, I may have just by watching so much NWSL mm-hmm. is that you see a uh, 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 kind of great quality or or at the very least you don't necessarily see a lot of blowouts. You don't see too many like high scoring games. Unlike in Women's Super League, where like a top team can right. really, really dominate uh, yeah. a team uh, lower in the table. So, in, in if you're watching in, in the the Women's Super League in England, you're like, oh, Arsenal, uh, uh, Chelsea, Chelsea, yeah. uh, they they're really good because right. look how how much they're dominating these teams. Exactly. And and in NWSL, you don't really see any right. team dominate any other one. Even so you, like the Red Chicago Red Stars, who finished last, like. Not every loss was a blowout. Exactly. Some of them were just like one goal, two goals, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, no, absolutely. Like the, the bottom team can run with the top team. Yeah, so it's it's a, it's a like, um, you know, people always have the, the conversations of comparing like pr- promotion relegation mm-hmm. in the U.S. and should we have that? And then, but... It, should we have that? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine talking about it. I mean, it, 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 it in general, it, look, it can be a conversation even within NWSL. Like, should NWSL have... Um, uh, promotion relegation as opposed to what we're, you know, the the um, uh, USL Super League that is yeah, st- starting, right? And starting. it's like, is that a concern of like, you know, I know there's not enough spots in NWSL for every a potential right. uh, professional player that, right. that wants to play. So this could be a good option. But having two first divisions seems like a mistake. I mean, uh, that, in my mind, I could be 100% yeah. wrong. Uh, it's it's weird. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Um, I I guess I'm like uh, I'm reserving judgment. Yeah, right. Let's see what happens. <laughs> um, it's just so interesting. Like when you know, at least I can't speak for like the you know MLS or anything like that. But I we're too NWSL is like too new. We don't have the infrastructure yet to do like a relegation type thing here yeah. yet. Yet, um, but. Yeah, this came up actually at the press conference today with Jessica Berman about the the Super League. It was very like non-answer, like we'll see. Okay, but, yeah, but yeah. I think everybody really is like we'll see. Like, what is this going to be like? Like, what are these teams? What are their resources? What is it? What are they going to look like? What kind of players are they going to get? Stadium? Where are they going to play? Where are they going to play? Yeah, like yeah. Brooklyn FC, I think is playing like in Coney Island baseball that baseball field. Yeah, something yeah, like that. Um, so it's um, yeah. I think everyone is just kind of like. Uh, okay. <laughs> we'll see what, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, because yeah. it'd, be, it'd be weird if Jessica Berman was like, we're going to crush I, them. Oh <laughs> we will not let them compete. I, I know. I'd be like, respect. <laughs> damn, damn Jessica. Like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> just, just salivating, just waiting to destroy <laughs> any competitor. Uh, <laughs> no, because, it, yeah, there has to be a... Um, a, a, a you know a, a future of, of of the league and the sport and then women's soccer has its own challenges right. uh, that that they have to face. So it's we, still growing. It's yeah, still yeah, growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we all have to figure out like you know just like MLS having these issues with U.S. Open Cup and and we all have yeah. to kind of collectively decide like what is the best. So upsetting. I love that. I love that cup. But it's a it's a strange uh, thing. I I I think you know it, it's the 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 balance of like. You know, even in women's in women's sports, the the the, the sports have to make money. They have to be viable. Yeah. They can't just we can't just be uh, uh, throwing money into something without plans of like how Absolutely. to recoup it and yeah. stuff like that. So I I try to understand both sides, but like a, a, as the 
the the emotional side of right, my the, the, the fan in me fan, yeah. is like yeah. no we need to have these uh, we we need to have the 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 bottom of of what the pyramid looks like yep. to be it, it, people should still be interested in it even if yes. they don't have an MLS team in their city there should be people interested in soccer and there should be an outlet uh, uh, for them so um, yeah look the NWSL season starts uh, this weekend uh, oh, before we end this segment I just want to we, we were we started talking about the Utah Royals and we have to address the the, the tweet of all tweets the tweet. <laughs> okay <of> all <laughs> So if any, if you uh, if you're uh, like me and one of the you know Kate Middleton conspiracy theory girlies, because uh, I've been <laughs> I've been consuming oh. it on TikTok. Oh, for I cannot even begin to think they're trying to ban TikTok and then will not let me get access to the Kate Middleton conspiracy I, theories. I know. It's, Although I did delete TikTok on my phone recently because I was like too addicted. It is that. That's that's. I did. That's I'm the, taking. A, I'm like got a TikTok hiatus, <laughs> but I get enough on Instagram and Twitter. So yeah, yeah. We're good. We're good. I'm in. I'm in. There's enough people doing the good work and yes. sharing the content from TikTok yes. to your other <laughs> platforms. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so thank you for all the people <laughs> aggregating yes. content I, that I isn't yours you. <laughs> and putting it <laughs> in front of Jenna's eyes <laughs> because otherwise she'd miss it. Uh, but Utah World, so if, if obviously people haven't been paying attention to the Kate, Kate Middleton, we don't know where she is. They're doing, they're editing photos of her to make her seem like, you know, like proof of life. It's getting scary. I don't know what's going on. But, the Utah Royals, um, because given the ro royal in the mm. name, they decided to get in on the joke. And this is, like, look, as, as a comedy show, we got to talk about it because Utah Royals, they put out a statement that looks mad serious. OK, I said this is I'm look, this is how you have to read this statement. You have to hear with this sound first. <laughs> a statement from Utah Royals FC. And it says, quote, the royal family has been made aware of of the news following the sudden disappearance of one of its members. The official statement from the Crown is that despite reports, the member of the royal family is well and accounted for. For those wishing to see this quote unquote missing member of the royal family, Kate will be present on the 16th of March at 5.30 p.m. at America First Field in Sandy, Utah. And they are referring to the player on Utah Royals. Yes. It, is it Kate? Kate Del Fava. Kate Del Fava. <laughs> and they're like, we got a player named Kate. Yep. Let's do a whole joke where people might be concerned that Kate <laughs> Del Fava is... It's a good bit. It's a good bit. I'm not going to lie. It's a fairly, it's a fairly <laughs> decent bit. But look, as if I'm, I, you know, as a comedy writer, mm -hmm. the joke took too long too to way, get to. Too way long. Too long. I mean, because as a journalist, I'm like, what? <laughs> and the and the the text, the the it looks like a, a professional statement of of like of of import I mean, and concern. The font choice and the fact that there's no time zone in the time <laughs> of the game, I was you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Kind of yeah. lost me. <laughs> I love there. it. You know, we're sticklers. <laughs> we need to. Yeah. A... I'm like, what time zone are you in, Utah? Asking for a friend. <laughs> okay. What is mountain time? <laughs> so this is a, um, a a tweet that is uh, has upset a, a fair amount of people yeah. because the rightly it, so. It does feel. <laughs> it, it also feels a little bit like. Um, you know, using Kate Delfava in the joke. I don't know how much if she's it, in on it, in on it, or yeah. like cool with it. Yeah. Um, it. It's a. I look. I. I as a comic, I'm. It's not. I'm not judging. Like you shouldn't have made this joke. I. As as a comic, I'm always like, I see what you were going oh, for. Oh yeah. Well, it's so funny because I said to someone, I was like, look, if they had tweeted something like. Come see our royal Kate at 5:30 p.m. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay, cute. Well, you know, fine. You're getting it on the joke, but like the whole like formal statement. Because truly, I read the first uh, sentence and I was like, <laughs> I was like, where's Paige Monahan? You know, I'm like, <laughs> like, where's Imani Dorsey? Where? Where are they? It, it feels mad <laughs> serious. It feels like an April Fool's joke. Oh, 100%. 100%. And, and, and if it was April Fool's, I mean, there was a, there's a little bit of okay, like... Okay, honestly, if they could have waited, but I guess they didn't like know how long they I had mean, like, this. look, maybe maybe it's in slight poor taste, but like, I see what you were trying. It's April but Fool's. I love you have the tweet up and the, the one of the first gif underneath it is like the Britney Spears Britney, like, <laughs> like... Just like, a, oh. Oh, just a <laughs> So I look, I, I, uh, I applaud the effort. That's what I will say. <laughs> I'm like, I see what you were trying to do, and they, but because because this is a thing in, in NWSL from from the social media admin perspective of like this is why I appreciate yeah. people take risks, oh. they take chances. We saw 
Remember the the Gotham uh, the uh, schedule announcement? Yeah. We talked about it a little bit. Rip. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be. I guess it had to be deleted. Somebody yeah, got yeah. Uh, uh, upset with it. But but there is. But the, as as you know, uh, somebody who who comments on the culture around the game. Right. This is great. I just I love that they're trying and they're not always gonna get it right. <laughs> and it's like th- this is the main thing. If something actually happens to Kate Middleton, like if something serious, right. that's, this is this is not great, and that's right. why you don't. We didn't really participate in it because it's like I get I, we could definitely come up with some jokes, yes. But then it's like, what if something actually does? That's the only that? thing. It's like okay, like haha, so, but like is she okay? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Utah Rose better get on board and find in Kate Middleton. And <laughs> I know. Sure I, think they, so. I think they need. Well, it's so funny because I was talking to some other friends who were like, okay, like does this get deleted within an hour or after an hour? And it's been it's been it's been days. days yeah. <laughs> so you know, standing on business. We're not doing this no matter what. <laughs> they are. They are. And as as somebody who is committed to the bit, yeah, uh, they are committed to the bit. And okay, um, but now I think they need to like really get their sluice out there to find Kate Middleton. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's it. Get on board. Uh, uh, yeah, help out help out the royal family. Uh, yeah, they uh, need help <laughs> with Photoshop. <laughs> All right, we're just breaking in real quick with a DraftKings update. We got to talk about the FA Cup happening this weekend, yes. uh, the FA Cup quarterfinals, and we got to give a little cool against parlay yes. to get people hyped about this upcoming weekend and the slate of matches. So we're gonna uh, build a little parlay with the homie Miguelito. Sitting at the sitting at the desk big for the table, first yeah first in, time at the big desk today in front of the camera a lot of anxiety coming. <laughs> normally my my computer camera at home is not as nice as <laughs> people, this one so. people are like is this Miguelito himself it they're is. like is uh is. are we sure it's uh Miguelito what from Ireland uh, <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah strong yeah. Latino contingent I'm sure a lot of people are very confused <laughs> right now if this is the first time they've seen it they're like oh that's Miguelito <laughs> uh, so let's uh let's build this part lane. Uh, 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 together, mm-hmm. um, so we uh, we know the matches that uh, are coming up this weekend. Uh, it is going to be Manchester United against Liverpool, uh, Wolves against Coventry City, Man City against Newcastle, and Chelsea against Leicester. Your Chelsea, yes, my Chelsea against Leicester. Well, they won last week. So they won last week. Mudrick, bro, bro, that was a great finish. Can you believe that? <laughs> See? When he went around the goalie, I honestly thought, oh, he's gonna blast this into the third <laughs> row. But luckily, no, Mo, that was clean. Kept that was it on con- frame. confident. That was yeah, great. Uh, dribbling through all those people. All yeah. right, so we're well, let's uh, let's build. This this together we have a uh we're gonna start with uh Man, Manchester United, United Liverpool. Liverpool. Yep. We're gonna go uh with the money line for Liverpool because yeah, Liverpool, I think that's the best bet for this game. Liverpool should uh, uh win this game. Um, I, I don't know if it's necessarily gonna be easy, but Liverpool no. are yeah, this game's at Anfield, right? So that gives them automatically this game. Uh I, am d- I wrong? no 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 this game is not at Anfield. It's this at game Old is Trafford. at Old Trafford, okay. but still, I mean we yeah, re- we remember the Seven was it nothing. seven nothing? Yep. I mean, it hasn't been great for uh, you know, for Manchester United facing Liverpool in recent years. So uh yeah, we, we gotta favor uh them right now. Even with the kids, I'll take Liverpool versus uh, Manchester United. Totally fair, point. totally fair. Okay, next next up, yep. um we're gonna go Wolves against Coventry. Yeah. And in this game, uh, we're, we're, both teams are gonna score here, right? That's no, this is we're going Wolves. Money oh, okay, that's it. So Wolves. All right, so we're favoring what Wolves. Coventry, obviously, in the championship. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, championship. Yep. And uh, so Wolves should uh, comfortably win this game. I think so. I mean, look, I don't. I haven't watched too much of Wolves this season, to be honest. Um, but yeah, at, at this point, you're kind of thinking. Mine, it's really a value play that I like for this, like the parlay minus one fifty five mm-hmm. for a Premier League team against a Championship team, like on the money line. I would take that pretty much anytime. Exactly. Can. Exactly. And and together, obviously, a, a single bet by itself probably not a, yeah, not not a big win, value, but in a, in as a parlay, a parlay 100%, I think this, is a, this is a good a bet. So, all right, so we're going Wolves money line, and mm-hmm. then next up, this your, is the one we're doing both teams. To that's score. right. Your so your Chelsea against Leicester, and so which is interesting because uh, Leicester are in the championship, but they mm-hmm. I believe are in, in second or first or uh, yeah, I think they're in second place right now. What, Leeds Le- wasn't first last time I checked because it's it's also it's Ipswich, it's uh, Leicester and Leeds that are kind yeah. of the ones that have been pretty dominant. Oh, Leicester's in first right now, so Leicester's okay. eighty two lead 79 points but okay yeah i mean i honestly think leicester if they were in the premier league this season they probably could do pretty well like they i don't think they would be the worst team in right. the premier league if they were up this season so yeah i'm not super confident that chelsea will get the win 
especially considering like a lot of the other games they played this season. Right, how right. they looked against Leeds, they almost didn't beat Leeds in the last round of the FA Cup. Um, and Chelsea's defense has been leaky all season. So mm-hmm. yeah, I like both teams to score. Um, I think again, you get pretty good value at minus one forty five, especially for a parlay leg. And yeah, I say I say this this three legger is looking it, pretty good. This right feels now. good. Okay, so we got the the full uh, parlay right here. Yes, uh, it, it ends up being uh, uh, the the three leg parlay ends up being plus four oh nine. Yes, yeah, so you can quadruple your money. Let's say you put a hundred bucks, you're winning four hundred nine dollars on this one. So um, it feels uh, this feels like a good. Uh, I feel like the the Cooligans got your your best interest in mind. Yeah, and, you, and your and your wallet in mind. And your wallet exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's really what we're doing here. Because <laughs> even even a Chelsea fan is like, I don't think, I don't think we're gonna. Dominate. I can't just <laughs> blindly take Chelsea money line, Christian. After this season, you can't bet on anything. 100%. Uh, so uh, head over to DraftKings, the, yes. the app, DraftKings.com, uh, yes. and uh, and we're gonna try to get this put up as a pre-made parlay. So definitely, yeah. Check so it might again. it might already be on the app. Uh, yeah, so, if you're listening so to so this, so go check that out. Yeah, All right, check in again before Saturday, real quick. <laughs> It'll be up there. That's it. Dra- download the DraftKings app and get on board with the Cooligans parlay. So turning it to our attention from some club soccer that's happening um, in the United States right now to the U.S. women's national team. It's going to be a big year for the U.S. women's national team. Got a new manager, got a lot of new players coming in after a disappointing World Cup last year. You know, Jenna, what are you making of the team? How do you think they're going to fare? Well, they just won the women's gold cup. We should mention yeah, that. Yeah, that, that so they bad, did just right? win a big trophy. They did. Vamos, vamos, vamos. No, <laughs> I love that song. Um, my my wife was over there for, for CBS, and mm-hmm. she brought me back, like, all these, like, little key change of, like, the gold cup. <laughs> yeah, I have yeah, one yeah. in my backpack over there, actually. Um, I think that win was so important for this team um, because, oof, it yeah. has not been pretty. Um I, it's so funny because, like, everyone's always trying to, like, diagnose the problem. Like, where did it start? What's the issue? Was it coaching? Was it the pipeline? Blah, blah, blah. I think it's, like, to me, I'm, like, not bored of that, but it's, like, okay, like, there's problems. Like, we need to stop, like, going back and thinking, like, oh, what went wrong? And now entering this phase where we're, like, let's fix it. Yeah. And I think we saw a lot of that happening in the Gold Cup. Um, it's obviously like a super weird time where Emma Hayes is going to come in, but Twyla Kilgore is the interim. But like we all know, Emma Hayes is yeah, like yeah, on she... Facetime during these games, exactly. and, like, <laughs> like three in the morning in London, like screaming at Facetime. Um, so I think that win was really important. It wasn't the prettiest win. Mm-hmm. Um, they had some bright moments. They had some real stinkers, like that Mexico game. Um, but I think we're starting to see what I always thought was really important, which was getting the fresh faces into the team. Because yeah. I think that there was too long of a gap between the 2019 World Cup win, going into the Olympics, I think COVID was a big part of this, and integrating new young talent into the team in a way that made sense. Yeah. In ways that was very natural in 2015 and 2019, and just didn't happen. We just kept seeing like the same players who were still great and still playing at a high level, but that's not how you have like longevity it's for mm-hmm. the team. So that's always kind of been like my diagnosis of the problem. Um, also like, Emma Hayes could not be more different from Vladko Andonovsky in like right every that, yeah. single way possible. <laughs> um, so I think this was a good win, but clearly there's there's still things that they need to work on if they want to bring home the gold in the Olympics. Yeah, and that's the uh, I feel like there's something in in the last Olympics there was a uh, just a um, just a difference. I don't know if in, in tone mm-hmm. uh, or and and I don't know necessarily not necessarily style of play, but like. The, the from the from the 2019 World Cup to the Olympics, they just didn't look like the same exact they didn't team. Look the same. And and uh, I think we've you know the the last two World Cup cycle, the you know before the last one, the previous two World Cup wins were sort of um, uh, we got spoiled. We got oh. spoiled with like what the team looks like, how the team plays, yes. and we, and and just a very very high expectation. Yes. And and even a thing where it's like, why are any teams giving us trouble? Like you know what I mean? Like there's it's a- hard for people to understand. And I think it's like 2015, and for me more so 2019. Like that is a team we will never see again. Like that level of team is yeah. like a legendary team that like we will look back on and be like, holy crap! Like <laughs> what what was that like super team? Uh, but I think Ali Krieger had said, like, we have the first and second best team at the World Cup because of our yeah, starters yeah, and, depth, and bench depth. players. And I think that was true. I think she was totally right. Like, that was just unworldly. That plus the fact that the rest of the world is catching up. Um, they are investing in their programs. A lot of that is because of the success of the U.S. Women's yeah, National yeah. Team setting setting the stage for that. But there still is, like, a level of excellence in winning that the U.S. expects 
the fans expect, but the team expects from themselves as well. So yeah. I know they're not happy with some of their some of the results lately and all that, and so they're they're ready to. Yeah, I wanted to just point this out because and, and shout out to uh, Adam Bell's of, of the Scuffed podcast, and there was a great clip uh, that we had retweeted where he he was a- analyzing the, uh, the the Gold Cup win and just a a particular moment when uh, he, he was just hi- highly highlighting the fact that the players. Um, weren't not only were they like it looked a little bit uh, uncoordinated, mm-hmm. but the the fact that the players weren't um, showing for passes and right. and there's a, a particular moment uh, that he is talking about and I'll, I'll play uh, the clip from uh, that right now. Here he goes. Go back and watch that clip. Alex Morgan is standing on the edge of the 18, slowly backing away. Lindsey Horan's not even. I mean, Lindsey Horan is in the screen, but not moving towards uh, Lavelle at all. Corbin Albert is not really moving into a into a window to pass to her either. So Lavelle just gives it away. I mean, that's what happens. Um, and Lavelle ends up looking really bad, and I think Lavelle, Lavelle had a bad game. But she had nobody to pass to. For a long time. Why? She's standing. All right, so that's basically it. I mean, it, you, and we saw if you're watching on YouTube, you, you saw the, the the specific moment. But this is this is something that a you know, it's not a it's not a particular. It's not a necessarily a coaching issue. It's not. Uh, or it could, I guess it could be. It could, a, be. It, yeah. it could be a decision of like, hey, don't go towards the ball. Rely. Maybe the midfielders uh, will figure it, figure okay. it out on their own. But it's just when you see stuff like this, it, it makes you question like, well, is the effort really there from everyone? I mean, the what you, watching Alex Morgan not see three players around Rose and yeah. not go towards to, to help out and and Lindy. Yeah, and there is also like. Laurel's a beast and really gets by anybody. That's, that's literally like talking about this, and I, I, Alex and Lindsay are probably like, oh, yeah, she, <laughs> "You're gonna need it. four more defenders yeah, yeah. if you really want to get her truly, trouble." I bet they're like, eh, they're just like. Got it. We've so, seen her do better, like more than that. Right, like, right. So it's yeah. in, it's interesting the the um you know because effort has really never ever been questioned when yeah. it comes to uh you know anybody who plays yeah, for yeah. the US women's national team. So seeing moments like that and you know the game against Mexico yeah there are there are problems but they also took two unbelievable goals Ugh. uh from Mexico to unbelievable. <laughs> so it's I like mean, what, that, that their team is great. Like and I don't want to ever like make it seem like oh the US should have steamrolled them. I was always worried about that game. Right, right. That was the game I was most worried about. For them, sure, Mexico, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, as I'm Dominican, so that was that was the game I was most worried yeah, about. Yeah. The Dominican Republic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, please just don't destroy us. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of the I know a lot of those girls on the Dominican Republic team because they played for Queensboro oh, okay. in the USLW. Oh, a nice. Years ago. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, so yeah. Cool. It's a good team. Yeah, they're, yeah. Good, they're a good group. Um, so the um, yeah, so th- that's kind of a thing where um, s- seeing them. Uh, you know, I, I think with the 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 level of you know uh, quality mm-hmm. in in the Gold Cup is very different than the World Cup. Yes. Um. So they, uh, yeah, I think in the Gold Cup they can get away with a, a couple more mistakes. Even Brazil didn't have their best game in that final. No, they really didn't. Uh, yeah. You know, gave away the ball a lot, put themselves in like really dangerous positions yes. where where the U.S. could score. Uh, they, Brazil were lucky that it was only a one nil uh, uh, victory. Mm-hmm. But but th- this is just a this is this is what Emma Hayes I'm hoping will come in and and and, and, fix. and fix because yes. th- th- seeing stuff like this is just it doesn't get me super excited about the future of that thing when you see the, moments like the that. The thing I will say is um, for everybody on that U.S. Women's National Team except for Lindsay and Corbin, they're all in preseason still. Yeah. So I think that was something that I was really thinking about when I was watching stuff like that. I'm like, they're in preseason. They had. One week, one and a half weeks right. of preseason with their NWSL teams, and then they went straight into this gold gotcha. cup. So that was some, you know, when I see stuff like that, which is so un- uncharacteristic of them, right. like you have to think, like, you know, is this something that needs to be the coach needs to come in and be like, no, don't do that. You're right, right. We'll help her. <laughs> or is it just something like they're like still kind of getting back into form and sure. all that, and you know, especially playing um, teams that are in season. So you know. That, that, I think, is something to, to consider. But, um, no, I think you're absolutely right. You know, when they go to the Olympics, like, they're not going to be playing the Dominican Republic. Right, you know, right. They're going to be playing, not England. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what country is that? Um, <laughs> uh, um, but they're they're going to be playing the top of the top. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it's, that's and coming it, up. And it's a, it's a, a, a fairly small roster, the Olympic it's roster. It's a smaller it's roster. 18? 18. Just, yeah. Um, it should be it should be more. It right? really yeah. it really, It's just like kind of wild. It's like 
you know, there was a lot of conversations in the in the press conference earlier today about. Um, or, yet, or yesterday, when does this come out? I don't know. Uh, tonight, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, about player safety. And just the fact that, like, players are playing so many games and now there's, like, CONCACAF is doing, like, maybe, like, a club World Cup type thing. Right, and right. they just did this Gold Cup and, um, you know, NWSL, Challenge Cup, all this. And so player safety is always so top of mind. And so just to me, like, an 18-player roster is a player safety issue. I agree. I agree. So to me, it's insane that they yeah, have it feels it this. feels too much like, you know, before in like the seventies before soccer added subs. You know what I mean? Like it was just eleven and if somebody got hurt, you just played down. Well, I'm glad we moved up from three to five. I know, right? Like, I think that's been a great um, I was initially against it. And I get why, because it's like if you have a deeper bench, you automatically have yeah, yeah. an a, a, a advantage in that type of situation. But also just purely from a player safety standpoint and concussion subs, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, we it's made a difference. Yeah. yeah. So I think you know, hopefully one day the 18 player will sure. expand to 23. But I, it's yeah, not. I'm, I'm good with five subs for everybody but Manchester City. <laughs> the Manchester City. That, like, as long as it's not them. Uh, yeah, I'm, an, I'm an Inter Milan fan, so we're still, we're still mad. Okay, yeah, I get it. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Uh, a, a couple other questions from uh, from Gully Squad again. Patreon.com slash Soccer Cooligans. You want to ask questions to our uh, our guests? Uh, I'll just go through. Oh, this is uh, this is great. This is from Lura McCoy. She asked a question. Uh, what is the go to coffee order when Gotham FC gets paper plane food truck at practices? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I have sadly not been at a practice where Paper Plane has been there. Oh, okay, Shout okay. out Paper Plane. Yeah. Love them. Love John over there. He is a legend. Um, coffee's so good. So this is, so, I mean, they, they have, like, such crazy, amazing drinks. Like, you can get, like, crazy. Uh, have you ever been over there in Montclair? I've been to Montclair, but I haven't been oh, to. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. They have, like, there's this, like, one drink that has, like, yoo in it. Like, Ooh. yeah. It's, like, it's <laughs> That sounds amazing. Yeah. So he's so great. So, like, at, so if you follow me, you know I love candy corn. Yeah, um, I've, I've seen this. This is a, I'm, I am a not know, a candy corn fan. You either love it or you hate it. There's really no in between. So one day um, he was like, oh, I found just John a paper plane. I found um, candy corn syrup. Ooh. Come. I won't be I won't be there that day, but come and just say like you're John Tonelli for the candy corn latte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they made me a candy corn latte. <laughs> That's fire. Okay. That's fire. <laughs> It was okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe it's like that one thing. It doesn't go great with everything. It was okay. <laughs> um, very sweet. Um, but my go my go to order is just like a basic latte, almond milk okay. latte, two shots, um, or just like an iced coffee with like some oat milk or something like gotcha. that. Gotcha. Yeah. Always I'm, cold. All right. I'm not a coffee guy. I'm a I like more a matcha too. Matcha. I yeah. love a, my, a matcha. My latte. my wife is a nutritionist and she loves matcha. Makes uh, matcha every day. Uh, and I so, get one after this. Okay, cool. <laughs> I got matcha all the time. All right, so cool. I'm, I'll order that when I go to Paper Plane. Um, the uh, Justin Friedberg uh, asked a question. Uh, we so we, uh, our joke about Gotham uh, basically signing all the best players. Yeah. We call them the Gal Acticos. Oh, yeah. I love it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, he asked a question: Are the Galacticos uh, the favorites to repeat as NWSL champs this season? You think they can do it? I mean, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. I think they could absolutely do it. Will they do it? I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's a very different team. I think, you know, it's so interesting to see the, the team that won the championship last year. I mean, they were still pretty stacked. Mm -hmm. Lynn, Midge, Esther. Um, I, I, I think that what I saw from that team was, like, something that was, like, so intangible that, like, really got – like, every team in the NWL has talent. Every team has a good roster. You know, some obviously are – you know, now we have the Galacticos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, I mean, they, they should be, like, winning every game. Like, that's the expectation. And the expectation is mm -hmm. much higher. And then also, and then their coach is also Amaros, a, 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 yeah. a great, such a great, great coach. Great coach, great mind, great team he puts around him. Fantastic. Um, but it's a different team this year. Yeah. So I'm going to be interested to see, like, can they take this super team um, and actually have that same... I think like soul that got yeah. them to the championship. And obviously last not year. have after Ali Krieger retired. Yeah. Uh, she was that, a big part of that. That's a yeah. huge part, big of, part the, of that. Just the the motivation around the team. Yes. And obviously 
her her life was going through all these sort of yeah. just kind of terrible things, yeah. but it it, it last, brought the team together. And her last season, her yeah. retirement, she had never won an NWSL trophy before, and it was so funny because um, on the broadcast, I don't know if you saw, there was a moment where she was up at the desk where CBS and Jenna Nyswanger and Midge Purse like came over. I and did see that. Yeah, yeah. And like hugged her <laughs> and like and I like and I tweeted about that because I was like, to me, like that's why Gotham won the championship. Yes, they had the coaching. Yes, they had the talent. Yes, they had the roster and all that, but they had like something that you can't manufacture. I, totally. So I think that, um, and in conversations that I've had like with Yael, the GM mm-hmm. of Gotham, like she says like, oh, we finished in sixth place last year. Like people forget, we finished in sixth place. It was close, yeah. yeah. And, it, and, and, and had they let in one more goal or had Orlando scored a couple more goals, like they would have been out. Right, right. So she's like, that's not acceptable for this next iteration. Like we need to be winning the shield. Exactly. You know? So yeah. that's our expectation and they can do it. Absolutely. I think so. And then, um, and see, just seeing the growth of uh, uh, Jenna Nicewanger. Oh uh, my gosh. And, and, and not, Nicewanger Nation. <laughs> not, and, and you know, she's, uh, as a rookie and yes. taking penalties yes. and, and you know, obviously scored a penalty for, for the U- U- U.S. Women's National mm-hmm. Team. The confidence seems uh, uh, is there and it just seems like the, the, the void of the leadership that Ali Krieger brought like I don't know exactly who it's gonna be that's yeah. going to be that 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 person. I think person. it's gonna be like Crystal Dunn, Kelly O'Hara. I, I see they yeah. were the two on the press conference today, and I, I do see those those are like two. on it as well. It's like not, I don't I don't so, see yeah. her like taking any crap from anybody. <laughs> it's funny because yeah, I do think there's like a lot of leaders on this team that are they they lead a little bit differently. Like they might not be the ones in front of the camera, but they are leading behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, and they still have like a ton of other veteran players on there. McCall Zerboni is still on that team. Sure. Um, who is like coming back from an ACL in like two seconds? Like, yeah, it's, like yeah. the craziest <laughs> recovery I've ever seen. Um, uh, Kristen Edmonds, like there are some like long term, long standing yeah. NWSL players on that team who also like bring bring that. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm just very interested to see not sure. only how it how it goes on the pitch, but off the I pitch. Met, I uh, met McCall at um, Ali Krieger's retirement party. And I got to uh, talk to her. She was super nice, and she had uh, heard of us. But then one of the uh, strange and, like, just cool moments was at in San Diego, uh, Yasmin Ryan, mm-hmm. her brother, yeah. came up to me, and he was like, hey, man, I love your show. Uh, you, uh, you spoke about my sister once. I was, like, super yeah. cool. I'm I think like, he's from around here. Okay, yeah, okay. I think yeah. he lives around here, yeah. Uh, so it's just, like, it's, uh, things like that where you met, we mentioned earlier, like, yeah. you don't know who listens. You don't know who follows. That's you true. don't know who's really. And it's then it's true. like, Yasmin's brother. Yasmin's brother is yeah. like a fan of the show. It's just- she, uh, Yasmin Ryan is also like incre- an incredible player, and yep. she's so young. I and think, one with Portland, right? I, she, yep. uh, I believe. I think she's actually twenty three. Um, so she has like just <laughs> like so, like you are actually like twenty three. Yeah, yeah. yeah I get so it. it's just like she's there. There's other players on that team, like Neely Martin, uh, Bruninha, the Brazilian, yeah, yeah. who I think like the sky is the limit for them. So it's. Like, what I see happening with Gotham, which I haven't seen in the past, is not only do they have these, like, veteran players who are middle towards the end of their career, but they have young players that they're developing. And, you know, Macy Bell, their their rookie that they drafted, was, like, a standout defender, um, I think, at UNC. Mm-hmm. So I think they're also setting the stage for, like, that continued growth for the future. So I, I think they're doing all the right things. Agreed. Um, the uh, Emily Gerdes asked the question, what is your favorite non-Gotham off-season signing? Anybody comes Ooh, to mind? I mean, there's been a couple of them. Uh, if you want to take a second to think about it, feel free to do that. I have another yeah. question. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's do this about? last question. Last okay, question. cool. Um, uh, Abe asked a question. He says, uh, 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 what do you think uh, the reason is to why Crystal Dunn can't crack the U.S. Uh, women's national team midfield, even though she's one of the best attacking mids this country has ever produced? <sighs> <laughs> it's a big question. I feel I mean, like that. That's all I can do is sigh. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so it's so difficult because she is also one of the best left backs. Yeah. So it's like, how do you, as a coach, say, "Oh, okay, like we don't really have anybody, but now we have Jenna Nice Swanger." Yeah. So there is room for her to play more out, but she doesn't seem to be doing that. So. Um, I don't know. It's like if she hasn't done it now, like is she ever going to do it? Yeah. Um, I think Gotham has her listed as like a forward on their um, preseason roster. But I don't believe anything yeah, Gotham yeah. says. Like, I'm like, <laughs> they're like forward. I'm like, sure, Jam. Like, like, she'll be in gold yeah, yeah, like, yeah, in the next game. Just get, the, get the gloves um, on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I don't know. It's it's disappointing because, you know, she's said she would love to. But at the end of the day, she wants to be on the pitch. Exactly, so, yeah. It's um, like, uh, and she's so good. She's so good at left back. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see, though, now with Jenna Nicewanger. 
does that leave room open for Crystal Dunn to now make her Get case an opportunity. to be in the midfield? Because yeah. um, we could use her. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I I, I think the, the the one thing, and maybe this is, um, you know, maybe Crystal Dunn under the Vlaco era was. I mean, in general, I would I would just love to see Crystal Dunn score more goals oh, and and God, be yeah. up front a little bit yeah, more yeah, and yeah. I just even if she took one or two shots a game in in mm-hmm. a national team jersey, that would be great. But yeah. we do not. Oh, I can't truly remember the last like decent shot that she got in a game. Yeah, I can't either for the U.S., which is like. I just see it. I'm like, there's no way that she can't. And we've seen the goals she scored it, for the Thorns. It, and the courage. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's such a disconnect to, to see that. Um, <laughs> but, it's yeah, it's like I don't know why we just don't have, like, the, that. we didn't have that left-back talent or people they liked in that left-back role, and then she was just, like, so good. They're yeah. like, well, it's like when they tell you, like, don't be too good at your job. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Uh, yeah, just uh, do do the bare minimum mm-hmm. uh, so that you can keep getting your paycheck yeah. and not, uh, not any extra. But, you know, she got left off the 2015 roster, yeah, which did. obviously motivated her a lot in that 2019 roster. But, you know, if, if she was there 2015... We we would have won as well, yeah. and 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 obviously uh, yeah, she had a great 2019 World Cup. So um, okay, let's uh, let's wrap up there, everybody. Thank you so much again for all the uh, people who submitted questions. Shout out, uh, to, we got we got the the Tonelli gang. Uh, <laughs> that they're fans of you. Our fans are, are fans of you, so it's all good. There's a lot of cross uh, pollination, oh, as they say. Oh, um, yeah, fun. this is what I, I think. Our our audience, and I think maybe sometimes because of our maybe just because we're comedians, mm-hmm. or they, there's an expectation that we're just gonna be sort of brash, and our our fans are gonna be trolls and all that. Stuff. We have some of the kindest. Sweetest people, yeah. really women's do. soccer. Our community yeah. is just so cool. We have like a Slack channel. Everybody's just like that's awesome, awesome and supportive and great. And nobody's like uh, you talking about women's soccer. <laughs> nobody's like that. Everybody's like, yeah. please talk more about it. Uh, I actually find, I mean, obviously, like the internet is like vitriol central sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the community around soccer and women's soccer in particular is, for the most part, like very supportive, very kind, very fun. Like we all just want to like grow this game yeah. and see them succeed and see like kick-ass players like Crystal Dunn score goals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And so, yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd be fine with some shots on target. That's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Let's start small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shots I don't on ask target. Too much. Uh, well, Janet and Ali, thank you so much for, for joining me. Seriously, uh, just really, really, again, long overdue and you're welcome back anytime. Thank this was you so, so This was so, so fun. Everybody, make sure you go follow uh, Jenna on, is Twitter the main uh, place? For now. Yeah, until yeah. Until, like, till, totally... you know, until you start up your TikTok again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Somebody told me I should be on TikTok and I was like, I don't know. I don't think I have the... I mean, you have you seen the, uh, you know, especially with Gotham. Gotham, some of the players... Are great on TikTok. They are um, great on TikTok. Uh, the my who is it? My Tani. Oh, my Tani. Oh my god! Getting all the players to speak Spanish. Neely Martin speaking Spanish. I know. Is a beast. <laughs> I, bro. It's hilarious. I love it. I love it. She's great. Also, a great player. Great center back. She could play midfield. Oh yeah, but, uh, I'm yeah, like yeah. A big fan of her. Yeah, I yeah. She's no, fantastic. she's great. She was a huge uh, reason why uh, you know the the NWSL final went the way oh. she was a beast. Oh yeah, yes, 100. Yeah. percent And I don't know if you watched any of that um, tournament they did down in Colombia, but she was like the, I, I saw the highlights. She was like the player of the match in the final that's for right. sure. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. So TikTok, it's all because of her TikTok. Yeah. That's why she's so good. <laughs> uh, so go go check uh, check that out uh, at Jenna Tanelli yes. on everywhere uh, on every everywhere. On everywhere. Go uh, go give her a follow uh, uh, again. Uh, and, and subscribe to Equalizer if you want women's soccer coverage. Yes, we're having a, a sale right now. It's like two bucks a month for your first year. So. Amazing. All right. Yeah. So, uh, everybody, go uh, over and do that. Uh, it's at Equalizer Soccer yes. as well on uh, on Twitter. And uh, it's always nice. Uh, you know, even when I go to uh, NWSL games, although uh, I was at the championship and then there was somebody from Equalizer yes. there filming the... They, I think they, they were doing an Instagram live of the broadcast oh. of the skills competition. Oh, that's there was they no, were. That's there right. There was no coverage. Yes, that was, that <laughs> so was everybody the was like, the only place we can watch Taylor. it. <laughs> yep, our, our, our writer Taylor Vincent was there. She so, did a great job. Yeah, so that's, it's just, I do that all the time for Gotham. I'm always like going on live like when they do stuff post-match. I'm like, yeah. all right, I'm on live now. Yeah, like, I dude. Don't know, I, mean, I might be 23, but I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> doing. This is, Jenna Tanelli is the broadcast for, uh, <laughs> for Gotham uh, 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 coverage and stuff. Like that. So, uh, Jenna, thank you so much. This has been super, super cool. Thank, uh, you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, like I said, make sure you follow Jenna. Uh, follow at Soccer Cooligans on all social channels. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel.
channel. Shout out to everybody watching on DraftKings Network. And subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com uh, patreon slash Soccer Cooligans uh, for, uh, you know, so you can ask questions to our guests and, and a have access to uh, exclusive content. Uh, everybody, as always, y'all are the best. Thank you so much. We will see you Monday. Alexis will be back. And we'll see how upset Thierry Henry is with him. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everybody. It's the cooligans, buddy.